70 years of stories about Bigfoot have failed to produce a single credible photograph, let alone a body. So we're back to footprints. In 1969, near Bossburg, Washington, there were a staggering 1,089 of them left in mud and snow. The tracks of a very long-legged creature, but curiously, also a crippled one. Its right foot had twisted toes and misplaced bones, something that would be unusual, yet very natural. At Washington State University, the prints have been studied by primate anatomist and Bigfoot author, Dr. Grover Krantz. Footprints are just dense in the ground, but they can tell an expert about the foot that made them. From the position of these bulges, I was able to deduce the position of some of the key bones in the center of the foot and then reconstruct all the bones of the foot and uh, found most interesting that the center of weight of the ankle was substantially forward of where it is in a human foot. If we had an erect biped eight feet tall and it was going to walk in a human manner, how much farther forward would the ankle have to be placed? I did some simple arithmetic calculations on that, got an exact answer, then I went back and measured my reconstruction. It was exactly correct. That was enough for me to be absolutely sure that those feet were made by a living creature. Is there no way these could be hoaxed? If the Bosberg tracks of the crippled individual were made by a hoaxer, there are several considerations. One is that he had to know human anatomy with great detail. He had to be able to devise distortions of the anatomy. And he had to calculate exactly how an enlarged individual would have to be constructed in order to walk properly. That requires uh, an elaboration of thought and knowledge that I don't think anybody in the world has. The movement has always been controversial as well. Grover Krantz thinks that the gait of the creature is definitely inhuman. The Patterson subject walks with the body lean, leaning forward and the knees largely bent so that when it takes a step, it supports the leg with a bent knee and keeps two feet on the ground for an unusual length of time. It also lifts the foot very high behind each step, like so. In addition uh, to all those things, it also swings the arms, which is very difficult to imitate, like this. Well, this is something I can do for a few steps very poorly, but the Patterson subject did it for over 300 feet. I doubt that any human being could be trained to do that.